Hey everyone, Susanna here, and this is the bird I was working on yesterday. And sorry that it got kind of dark in here in my sunroom to do the next video. So what I did is I sprayed and covered the bird so it wouldn't dry too much. So, but it's holding itself right now. Yesterday was kind of... Um, it was still pretty soft, so it's a little better today. I don't have to support it with the, the tissue inside. I think I just messed up his beak a little bit. <laughs> and my worry with this is, you no, know, when you're doing something like that, is that my mug, I think it was drying way too fast. So hopefully it's still on leather hard stage. Must have bumped his beak. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, so this is what it looks like right now. And you can see all the, this is all the clay I took from the inside last night. I, like I said, I do usually in parts that I feel it's a little thick, I'll go back in and use you know any kind of carving tool like i still feel that it is a little bit thick in here so you can just go and take as much clay as you can from the inside too if you had already done you know the outside part there is still room to thin out a little bit i don't want to I don't want it to be too thin, but not thick either. So right now I think it's pretty good. So the only part that is solid would be the tail. And that's it. The whole part of the bird is hollow. You can see all the way through the head. And the tail is solid, but it's just a little slab. So that's not going to be a whole lot of weight on the mug. <clears throat> so let me... I did spray and covered the mug. Let me get it for you to see. Ah. So here's the mug done with the same clay. And so now he's just kind of thinking of how I wanted to visually have my bird positioned. And I might still adjust some of the cuts so you can see that it still fits there. But yeah, I am going to cut, like I said, because of the rounded profile, I'm going to cut a little more on both sides here of the bird. So, and I think he already shrunk a little bit too. I'm just spraying. Like I have to spray constantly so it doesn't dry. So I'm keeping this profile here. I'm just going to cut a little bit more. Cut a little bit more here. Getting to be leather hard, the bird itself. And then I can score and place, place him where I want it to see now. Looking pretty good. And what I did on the other mug, I added then later, I added the branch and his little feet to show that he's right on the branch. So I think that's how I want it. 
Looks like I need to cut just a little bit here. Right here. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little water. So this is a batch, just a small batch. I have four. It's going to be five mugs with all kind, different kinds of birds. And then I'll move on to another. I'll move on to another um, sort of animals. And I'm also doing my frogs. I can't forget my frogs. <laughs> but I'm doing... Um, some that are going to have some type of reptile, like lizards. I know those seem to be popular as well. I'm going to wet it a little bit more. I'm pushing it a little bit, rocking it back and forth, just so that it grabs. And then I start kind of pushing it. Um, so. Just starting to do the joint here. Now, I trimmed, yesterday I trimmed the tail. Um which I'm still gonna try to push it in a little bit more. I'll do that now. I trimmed the tail just so to be a little lighter, but I realized when I trimmed, I wanted the tail to be touching the, um, the mug, but doesn't look like it's gonna happen. But what I'm gonna do here is Try to make the tail just a little bit closer to the mug so it's not sticking way out. So I'm doing a little plastic surgery right here. And because it's still soft, I can still bend it a little bit. can always do that when the clay still has some flexibility. Once it dries too much, then you can't, you can't really do anything. I hope the lighting is okay for you guys watching.
And once this dries more, then I'm going to carve so it, it looks like it's got the, fe the long feathers on the tail. But I'm just trying to move just a little bit more. I should have seen that before, but I didn't. So. You know, when you're doing something like that, there are so many things that goes through my mind. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to think of everything. I always think of, you know, how if you're going to, you know, hold, hold your mug, if anything is going to interfere, is anything on the way? Um, if you're going to drink from it, is this keeping me from putting my, my lips over here? You know, all that kind of stuff I, I think about. <laughs> Maybe I just overthink too much, but so you see what I'm doing here? I'm pushing some of this clay, pushing it down so that it creates a, a nice uh, joint here. Because I don't want this to crack and I'm going to do this all the way around and then smooth it out like that. I'm doing the same thing here. Wet a little bit. So once you go all around, then your piece becomes a lot stronger for you to do any, like you can still push, but because there is air inside, it's trapped, you can still make some adjustment as far as like pushing here and there. If there is like a bump you see somewhere, you can still push. And it's easier to do it when the, there is air trapped to resist. So I'm going all the way, all the way around. Make sure if I miss any spot. It almost looks like part of the bird is inside the mug. I am going to add just a little bit of clay right here. Because um, it's part of his wing. And it's not much, it's just a little piece. out of the way. I need this whole piece here.
I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm just adding what seems to be part of his um, other wing. And then I'm going to carve some of the texture. But it looks like he's... The only difference, I guess, on the picture looks like his tail is down. I made mine a little... Going up a little bit. Um, Uh, so, I use, let me see what tools do I use for carving. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the diamond core tools for carving. They're really good. They make really nice carving tools. So, for the feathers, one of these two that comes to a point are pretty good. Um, this one is the P28. So it's not quite leather hard yet. So usually you would wait until it's leather hard. But I want to do a quick demo here how I carve. So you're removing even more weight out of your bird by carving it. Still kind of grabbing a little bit so once it's drier then it that wouldn't happen because that would be the optimal stage for carving so i'm not gonna, gonna do much carving right now i just wanted to show you a little bit hopefully i'll do another video for carving and and then later on today i'm going to paint all four mugs with the uh, under glazes so i'm gonna let them dry to full leather hard and I'm going to start painting them. So I'll do another video. Probably won't be alive, but I'll do a video. And I'll probably post it either today or tomorrow. And then I'll be moving on to another. Don't know yet if my next ones are going to be the frogs or I want to make a sloth um, mug. I want to make one with um, uh, sea, sea turtles and under the sea type thing, uh, theme. So on this one, you can see both sides of his head. So I am going to do the two eyes just with a little ball of clay. Let's see if I just. Sometimes what I do is I just cut them in half just to know that I have the same amount of clay. It's kind of hard to gauge to see if you have the same because <laughs> they're so small. Um, I think I have it right. What I usually do, I look at right in the center and see if they look like they are in line. 
I think my the beak might need some adjustment here. Maybe it's not quite at the center. But I can always adjust that later. So what I like to do is once I, even the other ones are not quite completely carved yet. I need to do that later today. But the texture really helps when you're painting with under glazes. Uh, you can make it so that the darker glazes, so let's say I use either black or black mixed with uh, blue. And I do like, a, I paint first where the texture is so that the underglazes kind of go into the texture and then you paint over. So that helps to give like almost like that darker uh, look to really bring the texture up. Once you fire, um, they really kind of pop the texture. You can see much better. So that's what I'm going to do. So I think he's pretty attached, pretty well attached. I'm not going to worry about making a hole. Um, I kind of go back and forth on that theory of either, you know, the air being trapped or I've tested without making a hole and nothing happened, didn't explode or anything. I was always told that if you didn't do it, you would explode, but it didn't. So now I... I don't bother putting a hole because everything is going to be glazed, uh, the bird and all the leaves and stuff. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick, I won't have time because this video would be so long, but I will give you a glimpse of how I do the branches um, using some texture like I, I got these from um, outside. I, ha I used to have, not in this house, but I used to have a cork tree. Uh, so these are pieces from the, the bark of the tree that I picked up and just, I go around with these on my coil just to make some texture for the branches. That's what I use. So you can really use anything for texture, but uh, for the branches, I just do a coil and then I kind of position to see how I want the branch to look on the on the mug here. And I can show you the one that this one here. See how I did it. So you see all the texture on the branch. So that looks really nice when you uh, start putting the underglazes and you can do the shadows. They fall into the holes and, and stuff. So I like doing it this way. So this is the other one, the very similar bird, um, similar bird to this one. It's also, a, um, I think it's called a tanager, but the one that I'm doing is called the, the um, green green crested tanager this one i can't remember what it was called but um i just thought it was very nice the the colors on it so i'm gonna move this just for a little bit I don't want to make it too, too big. So I start pinching the branch so it's not like real smooth. So I go around <laughs> pinching like this. I think each person has their own way of making branches. But this is the way I've I I know how to <laughs> make it so it's not all you know like a coil. 
And I think that might look too long. Yeah. So let me bring my mug here so that you guys can see. So I'm going to go from probably here to the uh, handle. So let me see. I'm going to cut a piece. And I usually go kind of like um, curve, you know, curving that around. So I might go from here to here. That would be one part of the branch. And then you, I have to look and see. You know, kind of follow that line to come through this way. So, let's see. kind of like this. So, when you look at it, you look in it like this in the front, you visualize that branch is going under him and back this way. So I am going to cut right here, right at the bottom of the uh, you know what? That's not right. <laughs> He has to come a little bit farther in because his legs, his feet will come like right here and, and it's going to look like he's hanging on right to that. So I'm making an adjustment here as I'm talking. I don't know what I was thinking. So it has to be further this way. So maybe right here. And then this one would have to come farther down so and I cut this one a little more ah oh, it's better and then his little leg coming like here on an angle at least that's what he shows on the picture does that make sense <laughs> to you guys? So I had it way over here, so it's impossible because his legs is back here, so he couldn't be on the branch that far. So I'm glad I caught that. Okay, so I am going to score again. Where's my... So coming from here. Just adding a little water. And then same thing with this one. I thought about adding some berries on this one since the other one has leaves. So I think I'm going to add some little berries on that. Okay. And once it's there, then I can add more texture to the branch.
I'm not using slip, just water. I think I'm going to sort of making this branch kind of get narrower in here and end right there. And then I can put another little branch coming this way, some coming down. But I didn't want to go into the into my handle. I'm just going to end it right there. So you can either, either use this or one of those clay shaper. And my, um, this piece of cork that I said I use just to put some texture there on the surface there. Just find whatever works, you know. You can use so many things for texture. Um, so I first put the main branch like that, and then I add some smaller ones. So if I'm going to add a, a branch that have berries, then I can come off to the side like this and, and going down, and the berries will be hanging. So, and then some leaves coming that way. And then I can uh, like to curve it a little more that way. And curve it a little bit more this way. And I'm, I meant to uh, make a video about making my own um, sprig molds. I've been making a lot of it myself uh, because I think it's going to save me some time in the long run. So I wanted to show people how to do it um, just using clay, sculpting leaves and stuff, and then pressing them onto clay to make your own stamps and sprig molds. I think I'm going to have a video on that because I know that's going to save me some time because I do use leaves a lot on my work. So sometimes I just add a little hole and then I go around like this just to resemble what you see on a tree.
painting out over here because I think this part is too big. I'm taking some of the clay from here. Kind of wavy texture. Then I continue over here, another little hole. Another one there. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm pretty much making some marks here on the I think that the branch is too thick, like here. I'm just removing some of this clay. Same thing here. I want it a little thinner. You can always do it later, too, when it's a little drier. You can carve, make it thinner. So basically, these are all coils that I use, and then like this will be a little branch coming off of there. I'm gonna wet it. Kind of going that way. Kind of going the opposite. And I think I'm going to add another one here. Let's see. Much water there. But when it's that wet, I don't bother uh, scoring. Maybe one over here. I always make sure that the branches are going in the right direction, right? Because they either come down and you have to kind of think that way too, um, to be, I guess, correct on which direction the branches and the leaves are. So I'm doing everything going that way. As if the tree is down here and that's a branch going that way. So that's what I'm pointing to. Now here, I might put some berries right here and maybe some over here, like if he's really there because of the berries. <laughs> um, I might split it and make it so that this part of the other branch where the berries are going to be. So it's a little skinnier. And there will be just little balls of clay that you use as a berry. Um, 
So I'm just going to give an, an example of the, some of the stamps I just made, very simple uh, leaves. This one is a smaller one, but I haven't fired these yet. So these would be stamps. So, um, so my next firing, I'm going to uh, put a bunch of stamps that I just made to fire because, and I just do this fire because I want it to be porous. Uh, so that when you press this onto the clay, it doesn't stick. That's why they make real good stamps. Rather than those silicone stamps that they stick. Uh, so just to give you an example, a thin, thin piece of clay here. Uh, but for these ones here, I think I'm just going to do a cutout because they're going to be a little bit bigger than these. So that's why it's important to make. If you're going to make something like this, make it different sizes. So let's see. I'm going to bring my phone down a little more so you guys can see. Let's see what I'm doing. So basically, you just stamp, cut the excess clay around, and the raised area in the middle will be the indent of that main uh, vein on the leaf. I don't know, it's so small, I don't know if you guys can see here what I'm doing. And I just trim a little bit around. So this is a real small, small little leaf. And so I pretty much start just placing them and sometimes I bend them to look like they have some movement. So like this one can be here. So that's a tiny one. I don't want to, I'm afraid to use this one here because um, it's a little bit bigger. If I push too much into the clay, it might break off because it hasn't been fired yet. So, uh, but... I am going to be making a lot more. So I believe that's going to save me some time because I'm making uh, 45 pieces for the, at least 45 pieces for the gallery. So all these pieces I'm making that you can see here are going to be some of the pieces that are going to be going to. Um, Charlie Cummings Gallery in Gainesville, Florida. So you can do that. You can just make it a little cut out of the leaf. And then I'll show you what I use that works out really well. Uh, this tool right here. If anybody's interested on this, I can put a link. This came as a set way back uh, with something else that I got. It, it has a little bunch of tools for, I think it's the Sculpey clay tool set. I believe that's what this is. But it's nice to make the main vein of the leaf because it squeezes the clay out and it rounds the corners as well as uh see if you can see here how it is let me see maybe with the white background you can see how it is so it comes to a point but it's curved so as you squeeze this into the clay it makes the rounded edges already so i use this quite a bit and then you can make your other veins for your uh, leaf. 
So that's just an example. And so the way the, the stamps work is once you make a leaf the way that you want it to look, let's say if you want your leaf to have all the veins indent as opposed to protruding, so then you wait until this dries and you can fire this fire. And then what you're going to do is press this into fresh clay and then remove it. And that becomes your stamp on, your, on the other clay. And of course, you have to fire that too. So that is the process that I'm doing right now. I'm making a lot of stuff, not, not just leaves, but... Um, Another thing that I just made that is going to save me a lot of time is the, the little feet of my frogs that I make. Believe it or not, those feet, because it has the little balls at the ends, I don't know what they call the little suctions. So I just sculpted the feet and the hands of the frogs to make a stamp out of that. So that's going to save me a lot of time because sometimes making things that are real tiny can take you a lot longer than, you know, the, uh, the rest of the frogs. So <laughs> I still like to sculpt my frogs because each frog has a different position and stuff. So I'll sculpt, uh, sculpt those from, you know, from scratch. And then the little feet and the hands are going to be a stamp. So, uh, but anyways, that is going to be a new video that I'm going to post. But I think this... Um, this size here is better than this one. These are too small, I think. So what do you think? I think these are better, better suited for, for the size here of the bird. And looking at everything, I think I'm going to use this size. So I'm just going to put some water here and make this leaf. And sometimes I do a little curve like that. So it's, part of it is attached to the mug and part of it is out. Just add a nice touch like that. And I'm going to continue just making, you know, my the rest of the leaves. And... Oh, and I guess I'll post that when everything is done. But pretty much that's, uh, that's about the bulk of it, of what I do for something like this. Um, if you guys are interested, let me know in your comments if you want me to show how I carve. So that would be later on. So this is still kind of like a wet leather hard. Um, but I'm thinking that maybe by this afternoon, it's going to be to the right stage where I can carve uh, all four of these mugs. So if you guys want, I can do a demo on the carving. And that's when really I do the carving, then I clean everything up. I clean all the mug so there's nothing really, um, you know, to make it as smooth as possible because... This is going to be painted with underglazes, the branch and the leaves. And then the rest of the mug is going to have like a combination of glazes. So I, I, I like using greens and blues and, um, and then use a good liner glaze, which is that liner glaze that I gave you, the recipe. Uh, that is the, my preferred liner glaze is the Seltzer Chun. Um, and I can't decide yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to use the white or the blue as a line of glaze. But that's pretty much it. So thanks for hanging in there with me. I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday. Enjoy your time. And hopefully you're learning something from me. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.